We're all refugees in the sense the America we lived in in August isn't the America we live in now. And I think the greatest gift we can give people is just our time and our presence. We can help people, to quote Vicki Robbins, slow down to the speed of wisdom. Slow way down to the speed of wisdom. There's a quote by Mark Twain I like very much. Calmness is a language the deaf can hear and the blind can see. And one of the things I learned working with refugees is calmness is a language. If you breathe deeply, if you're calm, if you're quiet, just your presence can be deeply healing to other people. We can ask people, what did you learn from your experience? My definition of a healthy person is one who can grow and learn from every experience, no matter how terrible. And one of the amazing things about the refugees, I ask everyone I worked with, did you gain anything from these terrible experiences? And every person I asked that question of said yes, and then would tell a story of something good that happened to them, someone who was kind to them, a strength they found in themselves they didn't know they possessed, and so on. So we can give people the gift of asking questions and of listening and of helping them tell a story about their experience that gives them dignity, gives them respect. Isaac Dennison said, all sorrows can be born if you can put them in a story. And we can help people construct stories. Let me say just a little bit about our new world. I'll begin by quoting, of all people, Lyndon Baines Johnson. It's a good quote. Let's hope the world doesn't narrow into a brotherhood. It, let's hope the world doesn't narrow into a neighborhood before it broadens into a brotherhood. We're an increasingly globalized world. Right now, it's not a global village. It's a global shopping mall. We're all living in each other's backyards, but unfortunately, our ability to hurt each other far exceeds our ability to understand each other. Right now we have an opportunity to get things right. If we can learn from the lessons of September 11th, we have an opportunity to do what Gay Talese said, described as expanding the capac our own capacity to be human. One of the roles I think we therapists can play in this is help other people understand what needs to happen for healing. 9-11 was the most teachable moment in the history of the world. What it taught me is we are all safe or none of us are. We are all well fed or none of us are. We are all healed or we are all in great danger. There are so many different ways to talk about this, but I think the role we can play is as cultural brokers. We can ease people into each other's cultures. We can help people see, meet, and greet the other with more empathy and respect than is commonly done. I had a very interesting experience with a, a pregnant young Sudanese woman this woman, I'll call her uh, Abigail, is about six foot two inches tall, very, very black. She had a kind of a top knot on her head, and she was wearing, the day I took her to the health department, a red and white polka dot outfit with sort of day glow orange tennis shoes. So we went to the health department, and the health department is one of those other places I've learned about in my town since I started dealing with refugees. Long waits, crying babies, lots of forms, stuffy, unpleasant environment, grumpy people, scared people, broke people. So we sit for a long, long time in this very crowded waiting room with some crying children and unhappy people and anger every now and then sort of around the edges. And um, Abigail and I are sitting there, tired, looking, I'm looking at my watch frequently. Anyway, there's a little Asian toddler there. It's probably, I think it's a girl, and she's probably maybe 18 months old. And she starts looking at Abigail. 
she's just like looking at her. And at first, it's kind of cute, you know, it's kind of cute. But then she walks over and she stands right in front of her and she's just like peering at her just so intensely and for a very long time. And the whole room got quiet. You know, there's maybe 45 people. Everybody stopped talking. This baby was holding the gaze so long that it just got quiet. And it was kind of uncomfortable. Nobody knew what was, that was one of those another moments where it was, it was hard to know what to do. There was some discomfort, but it wasn't clear what the best thing to do. So we just sat there. We watched this baby, very quiet. I was worrying, was Abigail, were her feelings going to be hurt? Was something going to be happen that embarrassed her in any way? And all of a sudden, this baby broke into a big grin and started blowing kisses at Abigail. What had happened was she had realized this is a human being. This is a person like my mom and dad and all those other people that I've been taught to love. And the room, just everyone just started laughing. I mean, it was such a good sense of relief. And I thought about that as a metaphor for the experience we all want to have. I know from my own experiences, being in small rooms with many people who didn't look like me, didn't talk like me, came from very different backgrounds from me, that it can be uncomfortable, that there can be a real sense of different, but difference between us. But if we confront that difference, if we work to recognize our commonality, it comes, it, it's there, it's, it's, it's available to us. And when we have that recognition, there's a real snap of joy that comes with that rev recognition. Stanley Crouch said, civilization can be boiled down to one word, welcome. And I think one of the things we psychologists can do is help people learn to say the word welcome.